こんばんはすみません私はあなたを見てないでしたいらっしゃいません
the current mate government, all of the medical schools are modeled after the German. Mm -hmm. But because it is a little more difficult as a female to find training, those of us who don't find overseas training or don't have the resources to uh, find training with an American woman, um, instead we're still predominantly training under the Japanese. Mm -hmm. So I do practice Kampo medicine. Yes, even though you, you are correct, you are correct. Kampo medicine isn't illegal, but um, I think it was the 1879 ruling, 1874, you're exactly right, the medical care law. So Kampo medicine is no longer officially recognized. Mm -hmm. And so to receive an official license from the government, you have to study Western style. Mm -hmm. And so all the male physicians are studying under German tutelage. Mm -hmm. I, so I studied a combination. I see you're someone who likes to know the credentials of your provider first. That's all right, I, I wasn't in a hurry. I was only preparing and back. Yes, as you can see, I don't have, um, I'm not perfectly put together. Mm -hmm. Well, we get busy, so in between preparing and packing to leave. Yes, I'll be leaving the town. You, you're a newcomer to the town. Mm. Yes. Well, it's difficult for business here. Mm -hmm. So, um, yes, to answer your question, I do still practice Kampo medicine because I was trained under a Japanese tutor. Um, female physicians who don't have the access to the Western German tutelage. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yes, there's a lot of use in childbirth, especially. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uesugi-san, did you know him? Mm hmm Yes. He was the, one of the earlier Western-style physicians in Kyoto. Actually, yes. He was Catholic. Very unusual. I hear that his wife, when he dies, plans on keeping the Shinto ways and praying to his shrine, but she's going to make a shrine in the shape of the Catholic Church because he's Catholic. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, things have changed a lot since the Tokugawa era. As Japan continues to open up, we want to be ahead. The Meiji government wants to be ahead and doesn't want to have happened here what happened in China. Mm -hmm. That's why the westernization. Mm -hmm. It's important to become ahead, become a strong military power. As you know, being military yourself. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, and oil's becoming incredibly important. You're completely right. Um, yes. Yes, yeah, so Usugi-san didn't want to do... He no longer wanted to practice Japanese-style medicine. He felt that it was not um, efficacious, so he practiced the Western-style medicine, but himself and others in the area still integrate Kanpo. I don't think Kanpo is going anywhere, to tell you the truth. More than half of the physicians I know, even Western-style, still practice Kanpo. And almost all of the females. I think it's here to stay, but we'll see. We'll see. Mm. Now, because you're a soldier, but you mentioned being from the countryside, 
Did you have your smallpox vaccine before you deployed to China? In some ways, smallpox has been the most important epidemic that we ever had in Japan. Of course, as you know, that was Edo period. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you were from the countryside. So your relatives would have offered food to the smallpox demon. Yes. So. Countryside practices of quarantining and abandoning the sick, most of us here in towns consider that a little bit barbaric. And instead, we've been practicing vaccination and taking care of the sick. Mm -hmm. But it's difficult when you don't have the resources in the countryside, so I understand. Mm. We use what's called the Jenner, the Jennerian vaccine. Exactly. Exactly. No, so the first actual vaccination, that was 1824. That's, it's been some time. It's just that, you know, so it's been some, <laughs> some 80 years almost. Mm -hmm. Vaccination is widespread in Japan. It's very strange that you would have fallen through the, through the cracks. All military personnel are required to have their smallpox vaccine. Oh, that's why you're here. Your commanding officer found out. Mm. Why didn't a government physician vaccinate you? I see we both have our unusual secrets. Oh no, so uh, let me get that ready for you. What I need to do is I need to, I have some of the disease saved. It's scabs is actually how we use it. We use scabs from the people who've had smallpox. And what I'll do is I'll take a needle from the scab. Mm -hmm. So the first actual vaccine was made by Koroji Nag Nagagawa. Koroji Nagagawa-san. Let me just prepare this for you over here. No, he was from Kawauchi of Aomori. Mm -hmm. Aomori, yes, in the northern part of Japan. Mm -hmm. is where he was working as a physician's assistant when he found out. <laughs> no, I believe he was under the... when he came back to Japan, he was taken from the Matsume and by the Matsume clan. Yes, because foreign... at that... well, at that time, any outsiders or any Japanese people who had been in contact with the outside were taken back as prisoners. Mm -hmm. So he was under the Matsume clan when he started his vaccination protocol. <laughs> Hokkaido. Hokkaido. Mm -hmm. Other physicians who really helped to stop smallpox here were um, Yuzo Shiratori, mm -hmm. 
Kesa Kutagagi Genza Soseito They were all his students Yep But this was mostly only the Akita district Aomori, all that up north But of course now it's a requirement from the government Other outbreaks, mm. really that's how, really smallpox was the most important for understanding and developing how we have responded to epidemics since, of course. Alright, let me just inject you here in the arm. I have it all ready. If you can roll up your kimono for me, thank you. It is unusual. Men are not really permitted to wear kimono. And you said you were a soldier. Why aren't you in soldier's uniform? And not wear kimono anymore. Well, it's been a long time since the samurai were essentially eradicated. Mm-hmm. You should be in soldier's western style uniform. But I'm in wedding, of course. And most women are still wearing kimono at this time, you know that. How long were you in China? No. You're right, many things have changed here since you went away. But not so many. Most women are still wearing kimono. I. I would give it another 30, 40 years, and I think you'll probably see most women in western dress as well. Mm. Not the older women, of course. Well, like, is Usugi-san the wife? Mm -hmm. I think she'll be wearing kimono until the day she dies. She's very stubborn. Mm -hmm. You knew them, you know them, yes? Well, their son, he has since gone into the military. Um, he actually was just deployed to China, I think. I'm not sure, but he is gone. Um, there, mm -hmm. he's married now. He's married now with children. Mm -hmm. But, and of course, if anything should happen, they will all move back in with, with her. Who will wear a kimono till the day she dies? I think it's so unusual how she's going to have. She she confided in me about the shrine, about making his Shinto death shrine look like a Catholic church. It's her way of showing respect, I think. It's unusual though. I don't mind. Anything of your medical information, everything else is private. But yes, I did learn from them. <laughs> of course. Well, uh, since you've been gone a little bit and you're a little bit older, have you had a stethoscope examination? Okay, good. So you're familiar. Well, so, it, it was invented in the 1850s. I'll just take a look, because you mentioned... Mm -hmm. I'll listen to your heart and your lungs as well, since you mentioned feeling a little bit under the weather. Mm -hmm. The 1850s. So. As I was saying earlier, we do both Western style medicine and come over here. And for your abdominal discomfort, I'll do both. But let me listen to your heart and lungs first. Mm -hmm. Chico, the moon. I would rather.
And I'm going to listen in the back on the other side. Deep breath. And deep breath. And deep breath. And then just here, just breathe normally. appears to be in order there. Let me just look behind your ear here. Were you? Mm. fingers with your eyes. saying that you didn't see it in China. No, Chinese traditional medicine is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Well, what he always said, what Dr. Dolo always said was, in clinical medicine, we should only rely on what we have actually observed by examination of the patient. Mm -hmm. It's very data-driven. Mm -hmm. So we'll do a thorough examination of your complaints, and we will find the best herbal remedy for you. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me, um, have you have you been having any weakness or sweating? Okay. Okay. Let me take your temperature. Hmm. All right. I don't see any sweating or anything else like here. Can you feel this? Mm hmm And then over here, can you feel this? Hmm. All right. Let me see your tongue. Mm -hmm. I just want to inspect your tongue. Okay. All right. Mm hmm. Hmm. Well, let me take your pulse as well. Hmm. Okay. Mm hmm. Hmm. Oh, and how long ago was that?
I'm just going to press here and here and here and mm. Mm. I have all of the herbs, I just need to unpack them. Can I give you a cup of tea while I unpack them and set them up for you? Perfect. However, it did come from Korea. Mm -hmm. Most of our neighbors do see Koreans and Chinese people as inferior to Japanese people. Mm. I have my own opinions being mixed and being alleged. professional station in Busan, in Korea, mm, also were responsible for developing some of our quarantine procedures. Mm -hmm. The first Western medicine in Japan wasn't German. Many people don't know that it was actually Dutch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, translations and teaching came from the Dutch factory surgeon, kind of percolating through the area from Nagasaki. Mm -hmm. 1861 is where the first medical school was founded, and it was actually a Dutch medical school. Not. Mm -hmm. It's just that, in recent years, as Germany has militarized so much, the Meiji government has seen Germany as the future world leader to emulate. Mm -hmm. Hermann Borhoff, mm -hmm. he was one of the first, he was the first Dutch, well, really, Our mixed medicine. Mm -hmm. Well, that's 
forgive me for saying so, but really, while the Meiji government wants to promote a pure German style of medicine, the reality that is practiced is a mix of Kanwo, traditional Japanese medicine, and Dutch medicine, and German medicine, especially as practiced by female physicians. the way a small box vaccine came in. Mm. It's really a mix. Mm. Yes. Hmm. <laughs> Were you stationed in Taiwan? So, I think Goto Shinpai is still there. Is that correct? Shinpei. His public health reforms dramatically improved our Japanese colonization of Taiwan. For a long time, people felt that it was impossible, so many tropical diseases, but the morbidity and mortality of Japanese soldiers had decreased dramatically since he implemented his public health procedures. Well, and there's a new center for southern disease research there in Taiwan now. Mm -hmm. Well, I heard that actually they legalized the sale of opium to Taiwanese addicts. It's similar to what the British did. Because by legalizing the drug trade and also controlling it, it helps us to control, exert financial and economic control over the region. So the health system is really being used very much for government control. However, our Japanified German system is changing. sound exactly like Goto Jinbei sounds. System. Elected leaders of the household are in charge of disease surveillance. <laughs> Community surveillance, hygiene, discipline. So really, on the one hand, there's colonialism, and on the other hand, there's empowering the local population. <laughs> so, but it's also a sort of colonial medical police system. of households are supposed to inform not just on infectious disease, but on dangerous thoughts. Is that correct? Mm. That is exactly, that is, the, that is the system that was developed in Taiwan. So they're using it in where you were stationed in China as well. Mm. Yes. Well, it prevents the spread of contagious diseases and dangerous ideas that might be anti-Japanese occupation. It's also increased the numbers of arrested insurgents, but also increased the numbers of successful epidemic containment. So, so in some ways, the local population has something to gain from our occupation. But your Korean lady would rather have freedom, would she not? We live in troubling times. So cholera came to Japan um, by from the Chinese traders in 1822, and then right uh, just uh, a, a few years after the invention of the stethoscope, actually, um, United States traders in 1858, and then actually I know that our public information. 
information is that we had to quarantine in Busan because we didn't want the Korean populace infecting our soldiers, but the truth is actually Japan brought cholera to Korea through Busan. So the quarantine was both to protect and control the spread of ideas through Japan and Korea, but also because of our beliefs against the local Korean population. However, it also served as a way to prevent the local Korean population from becoming more sick. So the local Korean magistrates worked with Japanese officials to create a quarantine there. <sighs> there was a debate, yes, so the British held that cholera wasn't strictly contagious and neither was the plague. The British held that the problem was contaminated. So, but, of course, we have always believed in not touching too much. <laughs> That's just our way. That's just our way. So, we limit the spread of disease that way. Well, actually, actually, speaking of that, um, because medicine is such a big part of militarization, you've become disillusioned. Where do you think you'll go? Hmm. Oh, she died. So you don't know where you'll go, but you're back here in Kyoto for the time being. Hmm. Will you 
Chinese. It's a Chinese. 